We're presenting uh, third place in standard block A, uh, Roddy Chan. Thank you guys. Alright, so I was undefeated in Swiss at Anaheim Regionals block A. Uh, what did I I'll get to my matches, my matchups later. But I played Shadow Pal. Um, lost in top four, won my third place match. And I got third. So, so pretty standard. Um, I chose to play Shadow Pal because I wanted as many buys in the regional. Um, I figured the, the meta was going to be um, a lot of more Akumo because it was a cheaper deck, a lot more uh, end encounters OTT, so the amount of OTT players uh, would have went down. And I wanted as many buys as possible. So I thought the Shadow Pal versus Murakumo matchup was pretty close to a buy, more so than Murakumo versus OTT. So I went with Shadow Pal, but I had both decklists out like right before I tried to get in. Um, I had the two round buy, so um, I already started off, I already knew I was gonna start off the tournament 2-0. So I just wanted to get, like I said, get as many buys as possible in the round I played. Shout out on that, I played two more Kumos in Swiss, so ultimately I had four buys in the tournament. Um, and then the key, I think the key was trying to figure out how to beat the OTC matchup. And uh, I figured out how to beat the OTC matchup with Shadow Pal, and I'll show you guys how to, uh, uh, like, I'll show you guys how later. So starter, you have to play this guy. Um, it's pretty self explanatory it's pretty standard for the most part. I played four PPDs. Uh, three, this is definitely the worst card in the deck. I never wanted a CS card. Um, I played three and one. A lot of people are playing more of this, but I didn't want to play anything. Um, I didn't want to have to ride this first against Murakumo and just auto lose. So, four, uh, eight grade threes were fine. Um, I wanted to be on this as much as possible. People are playing this card really bad. They're not playing this card right. They're not. People aren't playing this deck right at all, I think. People are trash playing this deck. There's so many bad players playing this deck. Um, they're not playing uh, with it aggressive enough. I've seen people stacking uh, rearguard circles with force markers, but I think, again, anything but OTT, you should be stacking the Vanguard with um, PPD, because he's putting off 38 with a crit every single turn. And I think if they don't have a PG, like, a lot of my games ended, when um, they couldn't, on first ride on PPD, I'd blow their board, um, and then they just couldn't guard the, they just couldn't uh, couldn't guard, and then I hit the crit off the top, and they just end the game off that way. Um, Fate two, you have to play four of this guy, four of this guy, or four of that girl, and four of this guy. So this card is the reason why you can beat OTT. Uh, hold on, I'll show you. I'll show you. In a uh, four in the mains, she put in work. Four of this, four of this, and one of this. I played this over the other one, because the other one, uh, I don't focus a lot on the soul charge aspect, aspect of it. Um, I wanted as many plus ones as possible to get PPD skill off. And her calling a trigger and then drawing one, that's already three cards fulfillment uh, to blow up the board with PPD. And then you wanted as many um, uh, four ofs as possible. You want to make it as consistent. People were dropping this down. I didn't think that was right. People were dropping her down. I didn't think that was right at all. Um, just like how OTT, every single counter blast you have open is a draw. The same works for uh, Shadow Belt. Every counter blast they have open is an extra card. Every card you hear plus ones for the most part, um, and I just want to keep plusing, plus oneing, and uh, having incremental advantage, uh, incremental advantage throughout the game. Uh, four for uh, PGs. I didn't play any more draws. I didn't want to. Uh, four heals, eight crits. Um, People were playing five draws. I think that's not the right play. Not only are you decreasing the your shield value in the deck, um, it's just more often than not with the main, I'd be calling perfect guard, uh, perfect guard, especially against like um, Kagero and the mirror because it just doesn't do, it doesn't do as much um, going for it. Or against like, not the mirror, um, the Excel matchup. Uh, and I thought that was perfectly fine. Um, but the this card and this card. So these are the two cards that uh, that'll beat OTT. And the scenario, the you'd have to rush them at grade two. So if you open up these two, this is literally game. Like I did this uh, against all my against all the OTT players I played. When I was able to get that combo, I was. My great two turn would end up looking at something like this. Uh, here, and then something along the lines of this. 
So this card is already a 25 body and then on top of 30. So you want to make sure the, your game plan against OTT is getting rid of as many cards as possible over the turn. So theoretically you want to be eating two cards, two cards, two cards every single turn. Um, this card puts a 30, so it forces at least a 15k in another card. And then you want to make your third column bigger, bigger than 27, so that that's the, your other key to hitting six cards per turn. So you're gaining cards per turn. You're gaining like one or two cards per turn, and they're losing six cards. Yes, they get their counter blast to um, add a card and draw um, and draw one. But if you're keeping up advantage and you're putting a lot of pressure and you're forcing them to lose six cards, you could incrementally like. Um, wear them down and you can just end the game off that, I thought. Um, so that was how I was able to figure out how to beat the OTT matchup with it. Um, Morokuma was a buy. Round 3, I played Dimensional Police and I ended up beating that. Um, I had a pretty good grade 2 turn and the best part about the grade 2 turn is that when you go aggressive, they have to uh, make a field in response to that and if they don't, then they just lose. But then even if they do, they lose because then you ride PPD, you use all these resources, go up their board, and then you're, you're stacking the Vanguard Circle with PPD and you're just ending the game with that because you're punishing them to respond to you. Um, so I figured this was the best bed call for the, for the tournament. Um, I played Murakumo at a $500 tournament the week before. That was the best of three that I would have with it. Uh, but I, I knew I struggled heavily against the Shadowfell players and they were bad. So I was like, I want, uh, like I said before, I wanted as many buys in the tournament as possible. And I thought this deck was the correct better call. And I did good and I think I did, just made the right call. Do you want to you go any over any of your matchups or do you want to um, go straight to your shadows? Yeah, I mean, round three. I played Dimensional Police. Round four, I ended up playing Murakumo, so that was another buy. Round five, I played uh, Y from uh, PPG. I uh, played OTT. That matchup went really, the matchup went really well. But I was able to slowly grind them out after, with the same like scenarios as I mentioned earlier. Round six, I played someone from my locals. Uh, he was playing Figaro. Round seven, I played the Mirror. Um, beat that. Round eight, I played Murakumo. Uh, and I ended up first in Swiss. In top eight, I played uh, Murakumo. In top, my top eight matchup won that. Um, I lost the Mirror. Um, he saw PPD and I didn't. Uh, and he was able to gain more advantage than I could. Um, so, yeah, that's all. Shout outs to uh, Game Zone. Uh, where my locals where I play at here in San Diego. Um, a lot of players here, top eight at the event. Evo got eighth. Um, I, my other friend Nick also got eight. My other uh, friend Scott six playing Figaro, and also uh, we have another player that went tenth playing Aqua Force too. So shout out to the BDE boys. Um, and that's all. Y'all see me at Worlds. I'm gonna take it home. Take it home, San Diego. All right. See you guys.